Hey guys, Alec Oryx here with episode 2 in the Tarkov Arena Guide series bringing you the Road to Brigadier. This is the series where we look at each kit along every class path in Escape from Tarkov Arena. The goal of these videos is for me to help new and old players decide what classes are right for them, and for me to reach my goal of unlocking every class. Make sure you watch each kit section so you can get the rundown and pick up some tips and tricks along the way. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I also want to thank everyone who commented on and liked the previous episode. It was so amazing to see all the great feedback and questions you guys had. I am so truly happy that you all enjoyed it. So without further ado, let's have some fun and let's jump into episode two. For Episode 2, Brigadier brings us to the Assault tab, where we will start with the Stargazer preset and travel all the way down to Brigadier. The Assault preset's strength lies within their strong offensive firearms, usually in the form of assault rifles and sometimes with shotguns, sporting hefty rounds such as 7N40, BS, M995, and others. The Assault Tree also offers a wide array of frag grenades for most of its presets, a quality it shares only with a few presets out of the Scout Tree. Overall, not as thick as the CQB presets, but more flexible in maneuverability and firepower options. Yet still, generally no headsets. <clears throat> Alright, so we are starting off with Stargazer. Not even the John B. Gamer glasses will hide your tears as you find yourself looking to the stars as well, dreaming of what you will one day turn out to be. Unfortunately, I do not have footage of my original playtime as Stargazer, but I did jump into a game with him later to showcase him a bit for you guys, and, uh... It did not exactly go well. Stargazer is a starter class and is automatically unlocked. He costs 47,700 rubles per match to play and has a meta point score of 144. Stargazer comes equipped with the MTS-255 12-gauge 5-shot revolver shotgun. That was a mouthful. Inside of it, we are rocking the flechette fragmentation shells and the hollow sight on top. As backup, we have the 9x18 APS pistol, which can be semi or fully automatic, shooting PSTM GZH rounds, aka dog shit. Decent head protection comes with the old diaper helmet at level 3 on the top nape and ears, and the white 3M armor vest that has a level 2 protection on the thorax and stomach. The meds are actually pretty solid on Stargazer for being a tier 1 preset. We have an S-Mark for heavy bleeds, splint, and half of an IFAC for light bleeds and healing. Base level painkillers to round it out, and on top of all of this, we get one RGD-5 frag grenade. In a world of high-end fully automatic ammunition and class 5 and 6 armor with face shields, I got absolutely creamed playing this kit. I spent more time eating dirt than I could run on it. However, if we look at Stargazer in a more equal meta point level game, he is not too terrible. Lachette rounds are very strong with the MTS's slow fire rate, our time to eat through the enemy armor and kill them is very slow, so you will excel against level 2 and 3 armors. But you may struggle beyond that without well-placed face shots. Make sure you are switching your shotgun to double action at the start of the game so you can fire more quickly. I recommend removing the diaper off of your head if you want to be able to hear anything as well. You could make an argument to keep this on if the enemy is running a lot of buckshot or super low penetrative rounds. Be mindful of your reloads as it takes forever with this weapon. And try to save your painkillers until you get well into the map as they only last 80 seconds unless you plan to charge in like Tagila. <laughs> Luckily, you only need around 20,000 experience for the next unlock, so your suffering with Stargazer should be pretty short. Alright, real quick, I'm going to throw in Chappie to this guide. He is technically in this tree, however, he is an offshoot of the Stargazer, who does not lead to any additional presets. He requires 24,600 XP to unlock, costs 69,200 rubles per match, nice, and is valued at 271 meta points. He has the TX-15 semi-auto rifle shooting M855 with a backup P226 shooting PST rounds. He's got the level 2 Colpac helmet and level 2 Packa body armor. 
He has an F1 frag grenade and a decent med suite for level 2. Chappie is fun enough to run around with, especially if you're a good shot. But since he does not unlock anything below him, I do not recommend playing him unless you're looking to play a cheaper preset in a lower level lobby. Or if he's a ton of fun for you and you want to play him, go right for it. Again, ditch the helmet so you can hear, and let's move on to the next one. Oh yes, simpler times. Playing as farmer brings me back to my childhood and we'd work those long, hot summers in the hayfield stacking bales of milk and cows. Me and old Lester would skip out when Farmer Gary weren't looking, wherein we'd mosey on down to the creek to shoot tadpoles and smoke the cigarettes I nicked off my old man that morning. Things sure changed though. Now all we farm is kills. Instead of hay bales, we stacking bodies. Instead of milking cows, we milking them wins. <laughs> All right, time to put Farmer Allegorics away and talk about this kit. Farmer requires 22,500 experience to unlock, costs 59,800 rubles per match to play, and is valued at 260 meta points. Farmer comes with a semi-auto MP153 shotgun, shooting a 6.5mm express buckshot at 10 billion rounds a second at the enemy's face. Accompanied by his sidearm, shooting 9x18 PM pistol rounds, aka also dog shit. We are traipsing around in the 6 b 5 Yuli level 3 armored rig that covers our thorax and stomach, in addition to his farmer's pipe. Atop this rugged man's beautiful head is the leather cap, which is level 0 on armor, but level 6 on style. It is a real shame too, once I discovered what he was hiding underneath. Rounding out the kit are the meds. We have a splint, 200 health AFAC for our healing and light bleeds, and two Kalok Bs for our heavies. We have Augmentin for 150 seconds of painkillers, and PMB Injector for 40 seconds of health regeneration. I recommend popping the Augmentin at the start of most rounds and saving the PNB for when you need it. Farmer is a literal blast to play. For a low-end kit, this guy can really make his mark, even in higher meta point lobbies. Ideally, you are aiming for the throat and face, but leg meta can work here as well. With the rate at which you can fire this gun, if you have a steady hand, you can drop people in an instant. He is super mobile, and I personally found it quite hard to take my finger off the W key when I was playing this kit. This is one of the few lower-end kits that I will sometimes bust out and play for fun with friends and still feel like I stand a chance in my lobbies. Oh, he's at the side. I ran out of ammo. Oh boy, here we are with Stiletto. I had some trouble with this one, my friends. Stiletto requires 53,500 experience to unlock, costs 108,000 rubles to play each match, and is valued at 336 meta points. He comes equipped with the 590 12-gauge pump-action shotgun, shooting AP-20 slugs. He has a Glock 17 as his sidearm, shooting AP-63s. He sports a level 3 helmet level 4 OTV armor to the thorax and stomach, and rounds it out with a beautifully groomed level 6 mustache that you would only otherwise find in 1970s porno. Oh, yeah. For meds, we have a full car healing kit, three Kellogg Bs, a splint, and a Vaseline we want to pop at the start of each round. In addition to a starting reflex sight optic, Stiletto comes with the Trihawk 3 3X scope. Using this kit in general, and more specifically that Trihawk site, I really see why they named it Stiletto, because I feel like I am getting my balls stomped on by high heels repeatedly by a 9-foot dominatrix in our cock and ball torture dungeon. And just in case anyone was wondering what that might look like, take a look at what I probably spent a little bit too much time working on. <laughs> No, 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 wait, 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 <laughs> So anyway, now that we have all experienced that together, Stiletto is not a bad class. I did personally struggle with him, and I do think the Trihawk sight is not entirely accurate. After about 25 meters, yes, I tried the 50 meter setting on it. It's probably just user error at the end of the day, so your mileage may vary. I noticed a dramatic increase in performance using the starting reflex optic. In short, this kit is great for practicing your aim and getting those upper chest, throat, and headshots. 
The damage is solid, but it does suffer from simply being a pump action shotgun in a world of fully automatic weapons. If you do not hit your first shot and you are caught in a fight, you likely won't have time for more than one more at most. My advice is to be incredibly aware of your positioning while using this kit and try to be in areas where you can catch your opponent off guard and slink back into cover quickly when you need to. The pistol is incredibly solid as a backup and I found myself going straight to it in a few of my games instead of the shotgun. It is actually a great breath of fresh air after running the shotgun several games in a row, so don't be afraid to pull out that thang and go blast him. Alright, finally we can give our balls a rest now that we have arrived at Sector. Sector requires 159,400 experience of being in the CPT dungeon with the tall lady to unlock. He costs 128,900 rubles to play each match and is valued at 486 meta points. We are finally in full auto land. We have the G36 shooting 856A1 ammo that is decent pin until you run into the higher end kits. Our sidearm is the USP45 shooting AP rounds, which is quite solid to have as a backup. We get level 4 thorax and stomach from our AVS armored rig and a bastion helmet giving level 4 armor to the top of head and nape. For meds, we have a 210 health IFAC for healing and light bleeds, two basic painkillers, and two aluminum splints. For injectors, we have the AHF1 for stopping and preventing bleeds, which is a very solid injector. You can use this if you're about to make a big push or save it for a quick heal after a big fight. Also, we have the 3BTG injector to give us a bit of a stamina boost. Topping it all off, we have the F1 frag grenade. Sector, in my opinion, falls short only in the optic department. The iron sights are not the worst thing in the world, but they can be tough to track targets with once you start firing. You may need to burst fire in this scenario. The built-in zoom optic is so much better than it was in previous wipes due to the recoil changes made this year. But it is very tight, so you may run into the same issue tracking targets with full auto. Point fire is your friend with this kit. The rate of fire and low recoil make it a laser beam once you get a feel for it. Oh, and also we still don't have a headset. Anyway, Sector really solid. Huge change up from the shotguns before him. You will notice a big jump in performance here if you're one to struggle with shotguns. If you love shotguns, I'm sorry. We're done with them for this tier kit. But like I mentioned before, falling back to farmer, always a blast. All right, moving right along to Coulter. Our last stop before Brigadier Town. Coulter is a machine, for real. We have the suppressed Austrian Ugly Gun, aka the AUGA3, shooting 855A1 ammo that will melt through most armors with our high rate of fire. The backup Glock 19 with rip rounds gives us a little bit of lake meta action, and an F1 frag grenade to round it all out. We keep our level 4 on our head and nape, but we do gain ear protection at level 3 for a little added protection, and a little bit less hearing. <clears throat> we lose stomach protection, but increase our thorax coverage to level 5 armor with the HPC vest. For meds, we have a full IFAC, three aluminum splints, a perfatorin injector to stop and prevent bleeds, as well as give us a passive health regeneration, and a Vaseline for us to pop at the start of each round. Alter requires 289,900 experience to unlock, costs 193,400 rubles to play each match, and is valued at 568 meta points. Coulter could shoot a camel in the eye at 100 meters through a 3 centimeter hole. Please don't ask me what that means, I just made it up. That is how accurate this gun is. It is a true laser beam, and it is quiet as hell too. There were even times when I was not sure if I was even shooting the weapon. You will watch enemies melt in front of you as you simply tickle that left mouse button. <laughs> Crazy fun class to play. Coulter has the maneuverability you want in an assault class and has the power to back it up. There's absolutely no reason why you cannot just play this preset in any ARP level. The only thing he struggles with, in my opinion, is having a little less ammo than I would like, especially if you get into longer rounds. But for what he is packing, the rest of the kit is more than fair. I wish I had more to say on this class, but he really is just that good. If you were having second thoughts about grinding the previous kits, this guy might be the one to make it worth it for you. Highly recommended. Okay, here we are. Finally, we arrive to Brigadier. Guys, I don't really know what you want me to say on this one. It is insane. 
Brigadier is actually an insane class. He requires 416,000 experience to unlock, which is really not that bad because Calter, the class before him, is so much fun to play. He costs 248,500 rubles per match and is valued at 684 meta points. The shot price on this kit is absolutely worth it. He is actually cheaper than some other kits at his tier level. He comes with the HK416, which shoots 855A1 ammo, which is the same as Calter for that good, good penetration. And if that penetration wasn't enough for you, why not go deeper with one of his three 20 round mags of M995 ammo? You got the USP45 shooting rip rounds that you will probably never need. For armor, we have the Ulock for level 4 on top, nape, and ears, and a level 5 armored rig in the CPC Mod 1. We have a VOG 25 frag grenade, which is insane at getting kills off the start of the round or for flushing out those pesky little rats. For meds, we have two basic painkillers where you could pop one at the start and one at the middle of the round, as well as a P22 for a health and vitality boost. You get a full Calog B for heavy bleeds and an entire freaking grizzly to heal yourself and your squad if you could. Stargazer's dream has finally come true. We endured revolver shotguns pump shotguns, and nine-foot women stepping on our balls with high heels. <laughs> and now here we are. The HK is an absolute laser cannon. The rate of fire and accuracy on this thing is only closely matched by the Nightmare in CQB. I am serious. People just flump over to this gun. Not as maneuverable as Coulter, but still good enough. You can run around like it is freaking Call of Duty with this kit. If I was not spending so much time leveling up other kits in different trees, this would absolutely be one of my main kits to run. He offers top level firepower and support to the team. And the best part of all, we have headphones! We have sword in headphones! Finally, we can hear! I felt like I was in a Mr. Beast video having my hearing repaired as I actually cried tears of joy when I realized I could finally hear all the weavers sneaking up behind me. I don't know how you felt about the starter classes or any of the ones before this. If you are considering Brigadier, do it. He is a total beast to have in your lineup and well worth the time spent to unlock. So I'm going to wrap things up. And a quick summary for you guys, all in all, this road to Brigadier had some rocky moments, tears of grief, tears of joy, and a little bit of pain. <laughs> but looking at the big picture, an overall positive experience. If you are a shotgun lover, you will get your fix at the start. And even if you aren't, you will find that you're getting value out of them because they force you to play and think differently about the game and your positioning. All skills that can be translated to any class. I recommend this road to anyone considering it. The path is well worth it. Now, for anyone who wants a little bit of quick math for this path, in total, to unlock Brigadier, it will take you gathering 941,300 experience. This does not include the XP to unlock Chappie, as 99% of it is unlocked simultaneously with Farmer. We need to update our previous number since BSG recently introduced the new XP coefficient modifiers to each map. I roughed out the average XP gain for a match to be approximately 8,500 experience per game, which for this tree comes out to about 111 games to reach Brigadier, or roughly 37 hours of in-game time, given that each match averages roughly 20 minutes, including load time. Mileage may vary on this. If you look at our previous arena guide, Road to Haymaker, which I will link here at the end of the video, you will notice that we need approximately 375,000 less experience in total to unlock Brigadier than we did for Haymaker. That is not insignificant. As we update the Haymaker guide to the new math, we are still saving approximately 20 hours to reach this tier. So I would say Brigadier as a whole is a more efficient class to grind out. But if you're looking for the best bang for your buck at the bottom level operator, this is the one for you. Brigadier is insane. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. Obviously, these videos take a long time to put together, so if you enjoyed it, please consider liking the video and possibly subscribing to the channel if you would like to see more content like this. I really want to hear from you too, so if you have any feedback, questions, you want to add anything I may have missed, please do so in the comment section down below. I love reading your comments. I try my best to answer every comment on my videos. That is all I have for you guys today. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.